Good evening, everyone. To start this session, let's think for a couple minutes about rules. Now, you probably have rules in your family, such as maybe letting your parents know where you're going and being home by a certain time. And there's a reason for such rules. When people live together, they need to agree on what is okay and what is helpful in building relationships and what's not allowed because it might cause problems among that group of people. Now, similarly, we have laws in our society that help us live together more agreeably in our communities. We also have rules in our religious lives. The Ten Commandments were given to help the Hebrew people and ultimately us love each other more fully. When Jesus spoke with his disciples, he said that making good choices was about a lot more than just following the rules. He tried to, to get them to look beyond the words of the law to the intent of the law. One example that shows Jesus trying to help his disciples in this way is his Sermon on the Mount that we recently read from Matthew. Now, their law said if they made a promise to God um, before God, they must not break it. But Jesus said if a person makes a promise to someone even if it wasn't a special promise or made before God, with God's name as a witness, one should always keep their word anyway, whether the law required it or not, because that's the loving thing to do. Now, Jesus sometimes got in trouble with the religious authorities of his day for the choices that he made. He healed people on the Sabbath day, even though the law said no, must, no work must be done, and healing was considered work. But Jesus reminded leaders that God's law was intended to make them more loving to each other and God. So ignoring a person's pain or need because it's Sabbath, that's not the loving thing to do, right? So in the spirit of being loving and in the spirit of upcoming Valentine's Day, I am going to read you a brief story about St. Valentine. Now, the story of St. Valentine is a good example of a time when breaking a rule was necessary in order to keep the great law of love. It happened a long time ago, about um, 300, the year 300 in the common era, when Christianity as a religion was still in its infancy. It was very dangerous to be a member of what at this time was this strange faith that said God was a more important authority than the Roman emperor. The emperor, of course, preferred that the people follow him. So when a priest named Valentine was put in jail for being a follower of Jesus because he refused to worship the emperor, and the emperor didn't like that. Valentine was very lonely and very sad and very scared when he was in jail because he was most likely going to be put to death. The jailer's daughter saw him there, however, and began to visit him every day. And sometimes she brought him food. When Valentine learned that his death was imminent, he wrote a beautiful note to this young friend that had been visiting him, thanking her for her comment, for her kindness. And he signed it, your Valentine. And maybe this is what began the tradition of sending cards to loved ones um, on St. Valentine's Day today. But St. Valentine's gesture had a deeper meaning than an, ex and than an expression of personal affection. His life and his death upheld the right of individuals to act according to their conscience and their deeply held beliefs in what they believe is right in spite of the laws. So the child's action symbolizes the strength of the friendship and the concern. Um, given to those resisting injustice. So think about that story and think about how we celebrate Valentine's Day today. Do you think it's celebrated in the spirit of, of St. Valentine's? Um, I, I think yes and no. I mean, it's in some ways it's, it's about love, but it's really more become more about romantic love. And the love that, um, of that we honor with St. Valentine is really more about that deeper love of love of God and just love of your fellow human beings. 
Uh, I'm going to read you another brief little story about Father Michael Lapsley. Now he was, he worked in South Africa in the 1990s. And there was much in South Africa at that time that was similar to Rome in the time of St. Valentine. Um, Father M Michael Lapsley was an Ang Anglican priest and he was nearly killed by a parcel bomb in Zimbabwe in 1990. And most people believe that this was because he was very effectively um, publicly campaigning against apartheid and for international sanctions in many parts of the world. And this caused him by to be targeted for assassination. He pressed churches and anti-apartheid groups to maintain support for the sanctions, um, despite the re release of Nelson Mandela and the unbanning of the liberation movements. So Lapley said his eight months, while well, he was being treated um, for eight months recovering from the bomb, he did survive it. But during his treatment, he said he was so aided by the cards and letters from people from people around the world. He said, they took away my hands and one of my eyes, but they did not take away my tongue. So I can still speak out for justice and reconciliation. And today, South Africa is a very different country, thanks to the work of Father Lapsley and many other heroic people like him. So how do you think Lapsley acted in the spirit of St. Valentine's? He was, his work was, was really all about love. It was about the love of all people, even though the laws of South Africa at the time, he was going against the, the rules and the laws of South Africa, but he was doing it in the spirit of love for the people. So, Choices aren't always easy, and having rules can help us with the, with our choices. But sometimes even the rules can't help us. And that's when we can rely on the biggest rule, if you want to call it that, the, of all, the, um, the law of love. And doing what you know is right in your heart and what is best for everyone around you. A teacher of the law asked Jesus what was the most important commandment at all. And he replied, this is for Matthew, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. You must love your neighbor as yourself. So happy Valentine's Day, and I will see you next time.